Welcome to the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast, where we bring you a weekly dose of powerlifting news, tips, and training advice with a touch of 80s rock ballads. This podcast is presented by Team Roar Powerlifting, your source of the most comprehensive coaching and meet day preparation. Here are your hosts, Josh Roar and Laura Sturm. Welcome to episode 178. How are you, Josh? I am doing all right. Um, unfortunately, I do have some sad news to start out with, which I hate. I hate being the bearer of bad news, but uh, Robert Crawford passed away uh, in the last day. And uh, I mean, uh, for most people, I don't, if you're listening, you probably know Robert. He's uh, always been active as a referee, lifter. Um, he was one of the founding members of uh, the ADFPA, which is now USA Powerlifting. Um, and I guess to, to show how much uh, I guess he really cared about powerlifting, I, I got a couple quotes from his Facebook page that I'm going to post. Uh, so on, on June 29th, uh, he posted on Facebook that he – it was a picture of him in the hospital. He had a triple bypass surgery, and his, his uh, quote was, on the mend, moving from cardiac intensive care – I missed the big meet today in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So that was his uh, his concern from the from the hospital bed. Um, yeah, he missed the meet, uh, which is rare for him because he's at you know he, he drives his motorcycle to to pretty much every meet. So um, anyway, uh, then on July twelfth, which was only a few days ago, um, somebody just posted on his wall how he was doing, and he wrote, "I'm on the road to recovery day by day," and and that was in response to the question. So. Um, I'm not sure what happened, um, but you know, regardless of what happened, it's it's a it's a sad day uh, in the powerlifting community. And you know, prayers go out to to Robert's family and friends. And you know, what else to say on that? Yeah, yeah. I I found out when I logged on and I looked at the notes. And I was just like, oh, what? Yeah, because he's just he's a staple. He's just always there. And it's like one of those things you just don't even consider that he won't be there. Yeah. And like the, the obituary and stuff's not even posted online anywhere yet. It just like, it literally just happened. So this is, you know, semi breaking news. It, it might be out by the time this podcast is released, but as of our recording, it just happened within, you know, less than a day ago. Wow. So Robert Crawford, uh, you know, we appreciate you and, and love you and we'll miss you, man. Absolutely. Um, so on a, on a completely, I'm gonna try to try to make this transition into something funny and happy here. Um, as you know, equip nationals and bench nationals happened this past weekend. You know how, as a lifter, you have like the nightmares of forgetting your gym bag or forgetting your mm-hmm. equipment or whatever. Well, I always have weird, weird dreams too, and I usually don't tell too many people about them because they're pretty, pretty out there. But uh, I shared a few of them with with uh, some of the lifters, and they thought they were pretty pretty darn funny. So I'm like, yeah, what the hell? I might as well just talk about him here. So, uh, my first dream I had the night before, um, it was the night before bench nationals. It would have been Thursday night. My dream was I was at the gym benching and I was warming up. I hit 95 for, you know, for five. And then I went to 135 and I did the first rep and I got pinned on the second rep and couldn't get the second rep at 135. And so I had to start screaming for help and because I couldn't even get it off my chest myself. So somebody came over and pulled it off of me. Um, and then I woke up. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who, who it was. Uh, it was, it was kind of weird. That actually has nothing to do with coaching. It was just a nightmare I had right. the night before coaching. Um, <laughs> but I had another, so then the full power meet was on, uh, was on Sunday and Saturday night I had another dream. Uh, this one was um, basically how the lifting was broke down was um, in the first session, Amy was in flight A, Laura was in flight B, and Katie was in flight C. Well, in my dream, it had worked out that Amy's third squat was the last squat of flight A, and Laura's first squat was the first flight of flight B, and somehow we miscoordinated the the wrapping and we were all like everybody that was coaching was like watching amy's third squat laura sitting in the back and like freaking out because nobody's there and then they call laura up as next and nobody's around and she times out and just like 
gets really pissed at me and like, you know, you're the worst coach in the world, blah, blah, blah. And then I woke up. Um, mm. and, <laughs> which is eerily similar to the, the dream I had before the Arnold, which is the pro finals. Um, so the pro finals the night before I had a similar dream, but this one, uh, my alarm didn't go off and I set my phone on do not disturb so that, uh, I always, it just does it automatically. So nobody can, you know, nobody calls me or I don't get any notifications in the middle of the night. The only people that can ring through are, are hope. And I think my mom anyway. Um, so the night before the Arnold, this one just remind it reminded me of it because it was similar. Um, in my dream, I overslept and every one of them called me. I had missed calls and voicemails from all of them, but I never heard of it, heard it because my phone was on do not disturb. So when I woke up, I had all these voice messages like, where are you? Like, I need to get wrapped for my warm ups. Like, I need you here. Where are you at? So I had a string of email or uh, voicemails from all of all of them from 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 Amy, from Laura, from Katie, from Stacy, um, multiple, whatever. Anyway, so as it happened, I got there after squats were done. Uh, and I was, I'm freaking out. Like I rushed over as quick as I could. I get there and, uh, Amy, Laura and Katie all bombed out on squat. Uh, Stacy missed her opener, but got her second and third because she wrapped herself. And I, I come running up, uh, I come running up to him and I'm like, and Amy, it was Amy, uh, let's see, Amy, Katie and Laura were all standing there and I go, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like I overslept. I don't know what happened. And they all just like looked at me, put their heads down and turned away and walked away. Ooh. Didn't say anything. And then Stacy walks up like, this is like, it's still like affects me to this day. And it was just a dream. And then Stacy walks up and, uh, she's like, they're so disappointed in you. Like you, you might want to not talk to them for a while. Like, I don't think they're going to want to associate with you anymore. Like you really Ooh. let them down. Yeah. Screw the pooch. Yeah. Like those are rough pooch. freaking dreams, man. Yeah. And and that's, yeah. that's, that's me as a coach. Like I had some way worse, weirder dreams as a lifter. Mm -hmm. Like frick, man, it was crazy. Wow. Yeah. I, I still sometimes uh, once in a while will have a, a powerlifting dream where like you put in a crazy opener and, or you put me into a meet and I was like, wait, I'm not even ready. I've never trained. Um, the squat suit's too tight. Like we can't get it on. Like I still have these, these dreams of, uh, but I mean, it's always havoc and bombing. <laughs> yeah. 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 So good times. We didn't have any of that happen. Uh, so those are just the nightmares I have before the meet. And that's why, that's why I'm like, so always so like over the top, like trying to prepare, like have every scenario like written down, like what, what all the other competitors have done, can do, likely will do and just have it all like in front of me. Um, it's uh yeah, it consumes me sometimes, but uh, anyway, uh, those lifters did compete this weekend. So let's talk about that. Um, <laughs> overall went pretty well. <laughs> Didn't have any of the nightmares play out. Um, Lee lifted on Friday. She lifted in the equipped open and masters bench only. She got first in the open hundred kilo class and first in the masters. And she also was the best overall open lifter and the best overall masters lifter. Uh, oh. so she won uh, 500 bucks for her, um, for her best overall open. Was she wearing a bench shirt? She was. Really? She yeah, she benched uh she benched 1825, which is 402. Nice. Um, which was an open American record and a Masters one and Masters two world record. Wait, when did she first get in a bench shirt? Uh, a little little bit ago. She wore one at, so she did wear one before. She wore one at the state meet, I think in like 2016 or 17 or somewhere in there. Um just once, but wow. yeah. So, so wait, this is her second time in a meet wearing a shirt. shirt. Yep. And she got world records. Yep. And the open American record as a master's right. two lifter. Yeah. So that kind of makes you wonder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stay yeah. in a shirt. Yes. Yep. And then equip nationals was Sunday. Um, Amy pancake lifted. She got fourth in the open 75 kilo class and first in the masters two. 75 kilo class. Mm -hmm. um, Laura Sterling got first in the M3 82 and a half kilo class. Um, she broke the American record, the M3 American record in squat bench deadlift in total. 
So hmm. four, you know, not too bad. Hmm. Uh, Katie Dodge, uh, she she got first in the Open ninety kilo class and first in the Masters one ninety kilo class, and uh, she needed her she needed her third pull to kind of make it out of reach, um, and she, she came through with that. And uh, as of right now, just looking at the board, she should be in fifth place on the leaderboard for the equipped open. Um, and she'll be second in the uh, Masters equipped nice. um, per leaderboard. So she she's, as of right now, pending, uh, I think, Australian Nationals and uh, Korean Nationals, she will be in the pro final for open and equipped. Wait, that ain't right. Open and Masters equipped is what I'm trying to say. Right. Yeah. Um, and then Lee lifted again on Sunday. Uh, she got third in the open hundred kilo class and first in the masters too. She broke the American record again, uh, in the bench this time in the full power. She hit 173. Uh, she missed 178 on her third on this one. So a little bit less than she did on Friday. Uh, but she broke the open full power record, uh, for bench. Uh, and then she also broke the master's world record squat bench in total for M2. Wow. Yeah. So she had a pretty good day. She she didn't That's wear right. a suit. She just she wore uh, a singlet with wraps. And she was in so here's here's the thing. She was in the thick of it uh for the open title um as well. Um but basically we took a really big jump. We went from 172.5 to 190 on her second deadlift because mm -hmm. that's the number she needed to move into first if the other two girls missed their second attempts. Mm -hmm. Um, so we went to that um, because looking at the the other girl's history, the one girl was opening at uh, 192.5 and her all-time PR was 197.5. So I'm like, there's probably a good chance she misses. Well, she didn't miss, mm -hmm. uh, but but Lee did. She ended up missing 190 on her second. Um, so after second attempts, we looked at the board and she needed uh, 202.5 to move into first, 200 to move into second, or we could repeat at 190. And I'm like, she just missed. Like we kind of had nothing to lose, uh, so I, I really considered. I actually, I initially I repeated 190, and then I made a change to 2025. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm like, let's let's go for it. But then I'm like, you know what? She's got Raw Nationals coming up. Um, she already qualified for the Pro Finals and the Masters. Let's just uh, let's just go back to 190. So we went back to 190. She pulled it. Um, ended up in third. The other two girls missed their third deadlift. So, you know, mm -hmm. 200 would have got her second, which would have got a pro card in the open division. Um, and then 2025 would have got her, uh, you know, first and obviously pro card as well. And, you know, in hindsight, I'm still wondering, I don't think it was there, but uh, in the back of your mind, it's like, you know, in those scenarios mm -hmm. where there's right. nothing to lose, it's always in the back of your mind if you should have just went for it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but again, if, you know, if she hurts herself or something, then that really messes up our bigger plan. So, yeah, um, right. I think we, I think we made the safe choice to to stay healthy and and because we got to get training for raw nationals. Like it's it's like eight weeks out. So, oh yeah, yeah. So we don't have time yeah. to to really mess around too much with nope. doing you know yellowing. Um, <laughs> yellowing. I didn't know there was a verb. Yeah, well, I, like I kind of make up my own my own ways to to say stuff. Uh, so I had one uh little embarrassing coaching mistake at nationals this year a lot of people noticed and a lot of people are giving me a hard time about it so you know what i'm gonna lean in talk about it not make excuses so what happened was what had happened was yeah Sorry. after after squats comes bench press so amy hits her opening bench and you know lifting cast is on online so you can use your phone to see the board or the board over over on whatever right. well at some point well i know exactly at what point when Amy was on deck for her opener, the internet went down. So lifting cast quit working online, um, but it was wired in on the displays in the, in the room. So I, you know, was kind of, I was kind of bouncing back and forth using both. Um, and, you know, I look at the, I looked at the board over on the TV and Amy for her second attempt was like eight lifters out. So I'm, you know, it's bench and I'm coming down from the high of all the squats, you know, wrapping and everything. So I'm just kind of like, you know, not zoned out, but just kind of like trying to rest a little bit, like, you know, not being uber focused on anything. And I just look at my phone and it says she's on deck. I'm like, oh shit, get up. So like I get Amy up, we, we pour mm -hmm. a shirt down and kind of push through a couple people to get to the front. 
and start chalking her back. And uh, Jarrell, the Blue Mountain Christian coach, uh, comes up with the lifter. He's like, and he's just like kind of pushing through us. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Stop. And he's like, and he goes, Josh, what are you doing? My lifter is up. What are you doing? And then I'm like looking around and then uh, Tony Lee is the uh, technical or the, the technical controller. And he's like, yeah, so-and-so then whatever, Amy, Amy is your six out. And I'm like, oh, son of a bitch. Lifting cast went down and I'm, I was looking at it. I didn't look at it close enough because it was still showing on deck for first attempt, not second. So, no. yep. yeah. So after Amy's second, then when she did it at the correct time, every time I come up there, Tony's like, all right, Amy, you are on deck now. It's like talking like real slow and just like sarcastic, you know, looking at me as he says it mm. I'm like, I get it. I get it. I, uh, I made a, a stupid mistake. I am embarrassed. I, I, I'm sorry. And, uh, Amy was laughing too, like laughing at me. Mm. And then, so I, I immediately, like after Amy's second, I went over to Jarrell, the coach. I'm like, Hey man, that was definitely my bad. I'm sorry. And he just started laughing. He's like, yeah, don't worry about it. I'm like, yeah, it's 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 my first time coaching at a big meet. You know, I'm just kind of getting the feel of how it works. And he started laughing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, truth be told, I've I've uh, I've got lifters ready too soon, too. Like, look, looking at the wrong. Um, I think I was looking at the wrong platform or something. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. I was looking at the wrong thing. Doesn't matter what it was. I was actually looking at, but. I got somebody out. I'm like, oh my God, it's right now. Like, we got to go. We got to get up there. Let's get up there. And then it's like, oh, never mind. Like, yeah. So. Yeah, it just sucks because, like, that was, uh, yeah. you know, it could actually, it couldn't have happened at a better time because if it was squats and I made that mistake and had her wrapped. Yeah. And, right. you know, just That's so it could have been way worse. Yeah. Uh, but it was still pretty, pretty embarrassing, you know, pretty <laughs> stupid mistake. But I can laugh about it now. And, yeah. uh, didn't I don't think it affected anybody. Hopefully not anyway, but everybody's just like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> do better, Josh Roar. Oh, do better. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Boy. All right. So other things. Uh there were so technically there were three pro events this weekend, the Mid-Atlantic Regionals, Bench Nationals, and Raw Nationals. So or not Raw Nationals, <laughs> Equip Nationals. <laughs> do better all over. I'm all flustered, wow. man. <laughs> All right. So the Mid Atlantic Regionals uh, happened this weekend. Um, we had three new pro card winners in the uh, Raw Female Masters. Alexis Kajenki. Um, she's now uh, has her pro card and moved into 17th place on the leaderboard. In the Raw Female Open, Maria Rojas Chacon had a 491 dots, which is now 23rd on the leaderboard. And in the male raw open, Christopher Roberts had a 525, which is now 16th on the leaderboard. So that was the only raw full power event, pro event happening this weekend was regionals. Uh, none of those three lifters are on the roster for raw nationals. So uh, either they weren't going to do it or they missed the deadline. But because they earned their pro card, they're going to get an invite to register for raw nationals if they choose. So they, they will get to hop on the roster for raw nationals if they want to. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Uh, equip bench nationals. Uh, we're just going to kind of go through the, the best lifters. Um, so in the open division, uh, we already said Lee got first as the best lifter. Natalie Richardson was second and, uh, Sophia Varis was third. Um, so, uh, they were all really tight though. Like Lee, Lee had to get her third bench to, to win best lifter. Uh, Lee ended up with a 158. Natalie Richardson had a 157 dots. Uh, and then Sophia had a, a 145. Uh, so Soph is actually going to be fourth on the leaderboard now because there's a, a lady that had a 153 from the pro finals that's going to be in the mix there too. So so that's going to be a pretty tight battle in the finals if all four of them uh, accept the the spot. Nice. So that'd be pretty cool. Um, and the men's equipped open bench, uh, Tim Anderson was first with the 171. Preston Savoy Jr. was in second with a 170 and then Nick Benarakis uh, was in third with a 160. Um, but Nick actually had uh, a 169 from the pro finals and he actually won the pro finals. Uh, so if you look at the top three lifters going into the finals this year, it's Tim at 171, Preston at 170 and Nick will carry over his 169 
uh, from the last last year. So they're all within one dots point, which is it's crazy. That's going to be fun to watch. And then uh, Equip Masters, uh, Lee won Best Equip Masters Lifter, and Tim Anderson won Best Male Masters. So the best lifter in the open for male and female were both Masters lifters. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. That is crazy. So it's likely that we'll see uh, Tim and Lee lifting in the Masters and Open Equipped Pro Final, um, which is one, it's one flight, so they'll, they'll lift, double enter. Um, which is, is crazy because it'll actually shorten the flight. So instead of it's meant to be 10 lifters, but it'll actually, because there's five open and five masters in the flight, but right. because they're in both, that's going to shorten it to nine lifters. So it actually by accepting both invites there, he's making it a little harder on himself by only having nine lifters instead of 10 because <laughs> of the wow. flight will be smaller, but he's making it harder on everybody. So it's equal opportunity. Right. Uh, raw bench nationals, female raw open, uh, no surprise. Jen Thompson, uh, she won 500 bucks. Second was Elizabeth Marosek from Georgia. Um, she had, uh, won $300 and Natalie Richardson was third overall won 150. Um, so, but Natalie actually, she had a 114 at nationals dots, but she actually has a 127 from the finals. So even though Elizabeth beat her at nationals on the leaderboard, Natalie's still going to be ranked above Elizabeth because mm -hmm. uh, she has a, a higher dots carried over. Uh, men's Raw Open, Todd Talford was first. Preston Savoy Jr. was second. And Jermaine Lyles was third overall. Um, so those were your money winners in the Open. And the female Raw Masters, Jen Thompson again. That's another situation where you're open – open lifter is going to also uh, be the best lifter in the masters as well. And then, uh, uh, male raw masters, the best lifter was David Sneen with the 149 age adjusted dots, um, equip nationals. So, uh, the female equipped open, um, the best lifter was Sophia Varis with a 586. Second was Zariah Patterson with a 557 and third was laggy. Asang with a 547. And in the equipped division on the men's side, uh, Preston Savoy Jr. was in first with a 562. Brandon Gulch was in second with a 556. And Cordarius Harris was a, was 555 and third. Um, but this is the crazy part. They're separated by – at Nationals, first through third was like only a couple dots points apart. But there's also – uh, the guy that won the pro finals last year didn't lift it – well, he did lift at Nationals this year, but he – he ended up uh, only with a 534 dots, um, so he might he just kind of had an off day, um, but he had a 589 from the pro finals, so he wow. wasn't even in the money at nationals, but he's going to be number one on the leaderboard going into the finals. So the finals this year, like, is going to be no joke. Like, it's going to be anybody anybody on the roster has a legit shot to to win, uh, or to at least be in the money. You know, the big money. You know, the top top three places are the big money and there's going to be, it's an open, it's going to be an open battle. It's going to be fun. Right. And where um, is that going to be? Uh, that's in San Antonio, Texas, December 14th and 15th. San Antonio. San Antonio. Great place for me. Yep. Oh, and then uh, we didn't mention the masters yet. So female equipped masters, the best lifter was uh, Alicia Webb. Uh, so she's now first on the leaderboard for masters. So, so four of the five, again, there's still Australian nationals and Korean nationals left to go. But as of right now, four out of the five masters females on the equip side are team raw lifters. Nice. Yeah. So hmm. that's pretty exciting. That is. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the best lifter on the male side uh, was Gary Pamplin. He had a 573. He, he won the pro finals last year. He's still... Uh, in first going into this this year so yeah he's uh, been around a long time he's been around yeah yep uh and i i had said i had said that we're gonna solicit karaoke songs this week um but i'll be honest i'm, I'm a little bit tired from the weekend haven't put together the submission form so we're gonna push that back another week uh so I, I'm expecting we've been given plenty of notice at this point so there should be some pretty darn good and these are songs list. that you would actually sing if you were given the chance to sing karaoke. Correct. So if at any point I'm at karaoke with any of these submissions and I sit and I pull out your list and say, Hey, you need to sing this song. And you say, no, <laughs> we will retroactively 
take away any award you may win. <laughs> okay. All right. Wow. Ooh. That's a little. Yeah. All right. <laughs> assuming anybody would win that award, but okay. And and, and assuming anybody would even care. <laughs> like, what's your what? We don't even know what the what the prize <laughs> is for this tournament yet. So yeah, we're just gonna publicly humiliate you. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of what I do passively aggressive like when people when people leave their bar loaded i take a picture and post it on social media yeah yeah anyway so we'll get to those right. um, well that was quite the busy week that was a yeah lot. it was quite the busy week so we're not going to do any any uh powerlifting situation or new lifter tip this week uh my brain needs a break <laughs> so so I mean, you've been uh, having a good night's sleep since then knowing that everything's okay and nobody hates you because you didn't really disappoint anyone uh, i i have slept great now uh since the meet's over but I think it's well. Actually, I'm like hmm. the the uh, the stress coming up to a meet as a lifter is different than the stress as a coach, obviously. But like, I don't know. Based I on my dreams, based on my dreams, I'm not sure. It might be more as a coach for me. Yeah, right. Because like, as a lifter, I'm like I kind of, you know, if you don't know this about me, I'm a little bit of a control freak with stuff. Right, but there's more out of your control. I think is a. Yeah, there's coach. more out of my control. Yes. So like, that's why like, so that's why it's almost in some ways like, it's less on me as a coach. But so so I kind of feel like, all right, I definitely shouldn't screw it up then. But if I but I still could screw like obviously in the dreams I screw things up for people. So I don't know. I feel like that stresses me out more because it's like you 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 had one job and you <laughs> you effed it up. You slept through the meat. All you had to do is show up on time. Yeah, I had to right. train for, for, you know, 12 weeks, blah, blah, yeah. blah. All you had to do was show up and you couldn't even do that. Right. Right. No, so I mean, there's, yeah. So, well, dreams are weird. Yeah. yeah. Well, glad you're getting a good night's sleep. And yep. uh, we'll, we'll see you next week. All right. Sounds good. Later. Bye now. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode of the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast, please remember to subscribe and share it with your friends.